Hello everyone. Well, I've got another Dyson to look at today. This is a more traditional Dyson. It's a mains powered Dyson Bull Animal Multi-Floor. Some of you might remember that Dyson announced a few years ago that they weren't going to develop their mains powered cleaners. So this is a newer version. They have tweaked it, but it doesn't have very much new technology in it. They are concentrating on cordless machines. And at the time of making this video, they're about to launch a new robotic cleaner, plus a machine that will also wash floors using a special head. I think it's called the Dyson Submarine. You may or may not be seeing those on my channel. It depends how my funds go because I buy nearly everything I show you on my channel. I'm not sponsored, certainly not sponsored by Dyson. So um, I'm gonna open this, we'll assemble it and we'll have a quick look. Here's everything out of the box. We've got the cleaner, the detangling motor bar cleaner head, the wand, two clips to secure the cleaning tools to the machine. We've got the combination nozzle, which incorporates a crevice tool and a dusting brush. So you can slide the brush to the front and it's a nice soft brush with flared bristles, ideal for all your dusting jobs, but you can take the brush off and you've got a very long crevice tool, one of the longest I've seen actually on an upright cleaner. So that will get into all your nooks and crannies, useful for inside the car, also down the sides of your chairs, get those biscuit crumbs so you can slide the brush back on. We've also got the stair tool, a Dyson are calling this, but of course you can use it on your upholstered furniture as well, your mattresses, etc. curtains. Then we have the soft dusting brush. Again, nice soft flared brushes, ideal for things like Venetian blinds, dusting tops of books, shelving, etc. This is the detangling small accessory, the quick release turbine tool. So this operates on the suction power of the machine and you can see it's got rotating brushes and it's designed not to tangle up with pet hair. And then finally, we have the flat out head. So when you attach this to the end of the wand, it means you can clean under very low furniture where you couldn't possibly go with the Dyson. And this is suitable for both carpet and hard floors. And finally, you get a sheet of safety information and a quick start guide. The first thing we need to do is attach the motor head to the cleaner. So on a soft surface, such as your carpet, you need to lay the machine down on its front. But first of all, for easier access, you'll see these retractable wheels. We just need to retract those back up. So just take the machine like this and push it, and then you'll see the wheels have retracted. Then you can lay the machine down on its front, and then move this part upwards so you've got better access. Locate the cleaner head here, just slide it down and push it until you hear a click, like so, and you'll see that this slide is clicked into place. If this slide isn't in this position, you need to make sure you've pushed it firmly home. You can, of course, remove this anytime if you want to check for blockages, just by pulling up on the slide and taking off the motor head. So again, just relocate it, Press down until it's clicked into position. You then need to place the cleaner in the upright position and you'll see that the wheels have come down to stabilize the machine. We now need to attach the wand. Before fitting the handle to the Dyson you need to move the extension wand through the handle so just open up the cap here and push it through like so until it clicks into position. Then take the end of the wand with a silver button and insert it into the hose like so. It just slots in and clicks into place. With the pivoting section in this position, you need to locate the handle onto the body of the machine. So it just slots in like so, and it will click into position. You can then gently slide the wand down and close the cap. These two storage clips allow you to store the small accessories onto the body of the cleaner. This clip stores the combination and stair cleaning tools and fits on the machine here. So just take it this way up and slide it on here 
and push it down and it should click into position like so. Then you can take the combination tool that fits on the top, clicks into position and then the stair cleaning tool fits here. This storage clip holds the tangle free turbine tool and fits just here at the top of the handle. It's got a little ridge here that you need to locate towards the back of the handle. I'll turn the clean around and you can see a bit clearer what I mean. So if you see this clip here, just locate it on the gray part, just in front of the hose, and then you push it forward until it clicks into position. And you'll see when I turn the machine round, it's clicked here at this side of the spine of the machine and it's clicked securely on that side. So now we can fit the tangle free turbine head. Again, it just clicks in, slots into position. You've got to line it up with the slots on the caddy itself and push it in. To release the tool, you do have to press the button to take it off the machine. But when you're not using it, it fits very securely. With assembly complete, we can now store the mains cable, which fits around the cleaner on the bottom hook here and the top swivel hook located at the back of the handle. To secure the plug end, clip it to the rest of the mains cord like so. Before I switch on the Dyson Ball Animal 2, I'll just take you through the basic features and functions of this cleaner. The motor driven brush bar has three suction levels to deal with different types of carpet. This setting is for cleaning deep and plush pile carpeting. The middle setting is for medium pile carpet and picking up large debris and for short pile and hard floors and an intense clean of ground in dirt, you need to select this setting. With experience of using the machine, you'll learn the settings best suited to your particular carpet. For example, in my home, which is mainly short pile carpet, I could leave it on the short pile setting, but for my living room, which is a deeper pile Saxony carpet, I think I'm going to have to use the Dyson on the deep pile setting. To remove the dirt bin for emptying, press this red button here and remove the dust container from the cleaner. Then take it out to your outside bin preferably and then at the top you press the same button that you use to remove the canister from the machine. Press that down once and hopefully the flap will open. Took a while because it's a brand new cleaner. Once you've used it a few times you'll find the flap does loosen up. But yeah, you might have to give it a shake initially. So that's how you empty the dirt bin. Give it a shake to ensure the dirt has been removed from the bin, but you can take the bin off by pressing this silver button here. The cyclone comes out. Just have to jiggle it about a bit. It's never the easiest thing to do. And then you can see you've got full access to the bin and you can actually give this bin a wipe out from time to time. And then also you've got better access to the shroud here. Again, from time to time, that might become clogged with fine dust and pet hairs, etc. So you can brush that or gently wipe it with a damp cloth. So once we've emptied the bin, as I say, you don't have to remove this part every time, just occasionally. We need to locate this tab at the front with the slot at the front of the bin and then just push it back. That fitted in quite easily and then close the, the bin door at the bottom like so. And then it should go back on the machine and it clicks into position. To access the filter, there's a little clip here at the front of the handle. So you just need to release the clip and pull out the filter, give that a wash, squeeze it out, shake it, and then leave it for 24 hours to dry before putting it back into the machine. And then just close the handle clip again, like so. And then you can put the bin back on the cleaner. To use your Dyson, you first need to turn down the top hook and release the mains cable all in one go. And then obviously take off the plug end from the rest of the cable and plug in. To lower the machine to the operating position, simply pull back on the handle at the top and you can see the stabilizing wheels have retracted. To turn the cleaner on, press the red button. 
Press the silver button to turn the brush bar on and off. My first impressions of using this Dyson on my plush pile carpet are favourable. A lot of cleaners I've used tend to bog down or cut out when used on this pile of carpet, but with the Dyson on the deep pile setting, it was relatively easy to push. There was no strain on the brush roll motor, it was spinning at full speed, and yes, I'm pretty pleased with it. If I was to select a different setting though, we might find that the cleaner head cuts out, especially if I select the low pile setting. I'm gonna try it on the middle setting and just see how it copes. On the medium setting, this Dyson was harder to push on my plush pile Saxony carpet, but there was no sign that it was about to cut out. It was still rotating at full speed. It just took a little bit more effort to move the cleaner back and forth. So for general day-to-day -day cleaning, I'd be happy to use the machine on deep pile mode, but from time to time, once every fortnight, once every month or so, I probably will use it on the medium setting because then I feel I'm getting a slightly deeper clean. Just finally going to try it on the more intensive setting, the low pile, which will give the maximum suction across the width of the nozzle. I have a feeling it will possibly cut out on that setting or be very difficult to push. Surprisingly, the Dyson didn't cut out on this plush pile carpet using the low pile setting, but it was very difficult to push, and I could just hear a slight strain on the brush roll motor, so I wouldn't recommend using the Dyson on plush pile Saxony carpet on the low setting. It's very good on the deep pile setting, obviously that's what it was made for, for deeper pile carpet, but equally it still worked on the medium setting. But for day-to-day -day use, as I said, I'm more than happy to leave it on deep pile for this carpet. But for the rest of my home that has shorter pile carpet, I'll use it on the medium or short pile setting. I personally prefer to use an upright cleaner when cleaning carpets, but they can be a little bit more inconvenient when using the hose. So let's see how convenient or inconvenient this Dyson is for above floor cleaning jobs. To remove the hose from the machine, first lift up this cap and then pull up on this red part and then the handle will remove from the machine along with the wand. So now you can fit the cleaning tools directly to the end of the wand. All the tools should fit. So we can take the turbine head and again say push and click fitting. It just clicks securely into place. So you can use it like this if you've got areas of the carpet to clean so you've got heavy items of furniture and you can't get the main cleaner in the gaps, you can use the turbine head. But also, of course, you can use this in your car, on pet bedding, on your stairs and hard-wearing upholstery. But it might be a little bit awkward to use with the wand, so you can remove the wand from the handle. I do like this newer pivoting design. Dyson introduced this a couple of years ago. It just makes it a little bit more flexible. But for tighter spaces and possibly easier cleaning of inside the car, you can remove the hose by pressing on the silver button here. And then all the tools will fit directly onto the end of the hose. So for example, I can fit the dusting brush. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility. You don't want the long wand when you're dusting your furniture, your knickknacks, your Venetian blinds. It might be easier to use it 
directly on the end of the hose. But for reaching up high, if you've got cobwebs, you've got ceiling fans or high areas to clean, then obviously by attaching the extension wand, you're going to get a greater reach. With a flat out head attached, you can more easily clean under lower items of furniture that you can't reach with the main machine. The main disadvantage of this Dyson when using the tools is the hose is constantly fighting with you. It always wants to retract back into the machine. It is a long hose and I'm going to check before the end of the video if it will reach up a standard flight of stairs, but it does want to retract back into the machine when it's turned on. It's okay when it's turned off, but when you block the end of the hose or when you're actually using the machine, it can restrict the airflow and then the hose just wants to pull back into the cleaner. Saying that, it is fairly stable when you're pulling it along because the hose comes out at a lower part of the machine. It moves along, it is fairly stable, but if you're worried about the machine falling over, you could always lay it on its side. But don't do this, because if you do this, the brush roll will start to rotate and the suction is diverted to the cleaner head. So if you want to use the machine with the hose, with the cleaner on the floor, you need to lay it down this way. The brush roll will automatically be off because it's in the upright position, although it's laid down and then it's not going to fall over. So you can go around your room if you want to do your furniture, your cobwebs, your dusting jobs. It means it's never going to fall over. So that is a little bit of a disadvantage with this machine. The tools do fit on very nicely. They're secure and everything stores away neatly. The hose doesn't flap about like some machines, but yeah, it is awkward when the hose is fully stretched. But to try that out, I'm going to get the machine in my hall at the bottom of the stairs and we'll see how far we can reach up. It is possible to clean the stairs with the wand attached, which will give you further reach and you could even use the flat out tool for your stairs, whether carpeted or non-carpeted stairs. You could use that, I suppose. I've positioned the Dyson at the bottom of my stairs to see how far it will reach with the wand attached and the flathead tool on the end of the wand. A standard flight of stairs in a UK home averages at 13 steps and I can say that the Dyson with the wand and the flathead tool attached did clean up to 13 steps although I have 12 steps my 12th step is a half landing but I'm sure if I had a standard 13 stair staircase I would be able to reach everywhere using the Dyson with the hose and the wand attached without the wand I wouldn't be able to reach quite so far it might be a bit more convenient though. So what you can do, let's discard the wand there. You could use the turbine nozzle. If you've got pet hairs on your stairs, you could attach that. So now I'll see how far I can reach with the cleaner safely at the bottom using an accessory attached directly to the end of the hose. With the Dyson at the bottom of the stairs, I could safely clean nine steps when using an accessory connected directly to the end of the hose. Obviously to clean the remaining stairs, I'd have to take the cleaner upstairs and work beneath it. So when you're using a machine in that way, obviously you need to take care that it's not going to topple over and fall down the stairs. But yes, it's relatively good at stair cleaning, not as convenient as using a handheld machine, a cordless handheld, or even a cylinder machine. But if this is the only cleaner you've got, you can use it to safely clean your staircase.
That's about the end of my video on this Dyson Ball Upright Vacuum Cleaner. I will be doing a future video where I actually put down some demonstration dirt to show you how it performs on carpets, hard floors and cleaning up pet hair. But in the meantime, as you saw, I've just cleaned my living room. I also cleaned a bit of my kitchen and a couple of doormats. So the dirt I'm going to show you is everything I've picked up during the course of making this video. So it's not demonstration dirt it's real life dirt and as you can see there is a fair bit of muck in this canister i'm going to empty it out onto the lovely clean carpet some of this some of the fibrous material is from a new doormat i've recently got so i don't think that's all from the carpet ah but what i can see and this is quite impressive there's a lot of grit actually that oh lord inside here apart from this gritty substance i think is the SIBO duo dry cleaning powder i put on this carpet weeks and weeks ago i also de detected bits of glitter there's bits of blue sand in here as well i'm pretty impressed with this i'm not a huge fan of dyson as some of you will know so i'm not a dyson fanboy i'm being more critical than offering praise of dyson cleaners but that isn't bad considering i've just cleaned basically the living room yeah that's pretty nice pretty impressive i'm going to vacuum this up again at the end of the video i'll just check the filter the cyclones in dyson's are pretty efficient so i'm thinking that the filter shouldn't it shouldn't be too dirty let's just open it up and have a look and i know i haven't used the machine much but i have tested cleaners other bagless machines the filters get dirty within the first few minutes of use but that is still clean so i suspect once a month for average use would be enough to wash this filter so my first impressions of this dyson are favorable i will be using it a lot more around my home before i do a demonstration video so i can tell you what i liked and what i didn't like about it but so far i'm pretty pleased with it it does work on this plush pile carpet albeit on the high pile setting and at a push it does work on medium but it is harder to push and Personally, I wouldn't really use it on the low pile setting, but it's nice that you've got different settings. All the settings do are open valves at the bottom. There's a little gate at the bottom of this floor head that opens up and um, allows more air to flow through, which prevents it from bogging down. And it would on the low pile setting, it will more or less seal itself to the carpet. That's fine for low pile and hard floors, but not for medium and longer or plush pile carpet. So that's good. I do like that feature. And um, yeah, all in all, it's not a bad vacuum cleaner if you're after a Dyson and don't want to pay the eye-wateringly high prices of some of their latest cordless machines, you wouldn't go far wrong getting one of the later bagless uprights. Get them while you can because who knows Dyson might consider stopping mains powered cleaners at some point but if they do I hope they come out with a full sized cordless upright because a lot of people don't like their cordless cleaners with the motor in your hand they can be quite top heavy a bit difficult to use for some people so to have all the weight in the base of the machine like in an upright that uh, might be a good idea so possibly Dyson are developing that I don't know because I'm not privy to Dyson's plans, but you can be sure I'll let you know if anything new is produced and I can actually afford to buy it and show you it on my channel. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you've stayed till the bitter end, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye for now.